it's ham nation time we've got a full show for you tonight bob is not here but that's okay We're, we've crammed full of content for you gordon's going to talk about marine radios and safety and that horrific accident on the west coast we're going to talk a little bit of kit building we're going to talk a little bit about hurricane dorian dr t is here with solar and we're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff you don't want to miss it oh brand new stuff from icom too brand new stuff from icom direct from japan george has that and we're going to give it all to you right now on ham nation netcasts you love from people you trust this This is twit this episode of ham nation is brought to you by ldg electronics LDG Electronics provides state-of-the-art automatic antenna tuners and related products for every amateur need. Visit LDGElectronics.com to learn more. By ICOM. For more information, visit ICOMAmerica.com slash hamnation. And by Hover. Make a name for yourself with Hover. Visit Hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. This is Ham Nation, episode number 418 on September 4th, 2019. ICOM 705 and Route 66 on the air. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Ham Nation, episode number 418. Bob can't be with us this week. He should be back next week. So I'm here with the usual crew of suspects, uh, including out on the West Coast, Gordon West. Hi, Gordo. Well, hi there, uh, George, and hi to uh, Ham Nation listeners and viewers. I know where Bob is. He's getting ready for this, Route 66, or is it Route 66? Anyway, they go on the air this coming Friday evening, and they uh, that would be the special event stations all along Route 66. They'll be on the air for an entire week. So all of next week, get out there on HF, and uh, I have an inside report of where you might uh, find them. Uh, you'll generally find them on a high frequency single sideband uh, whose frequency ends with 66, such as 38, 66, 72, 66, 14, 2, 66, 21, 3, 66, and 28, 4, 66, and up. So if you get a chance, let these men and women and kids have a contact. Their call signs will begin uh, uh, and end with just a letter, a number, and a letter as a special event for Route 66. And who knows, maybe you'll even hear Bob out there as well. George? Yeah, that's a great event every year, Gordo. I've heard a lot about it and made a few contacts on it before. I know Bob really enjoys that one, too. Well, also down south here, we've got uh, Don Wilbanks. Hi, Don. Hey, uh, yeah, we pronounced it Route 66 in Oklahoma. Of course, it goes through Oklahoma City, and I've driven on that little section of Route 66 a lot and uh, would love to go out and and do some of that stuff out west and actually drive what uh, part of the uh, of the mother road is still alive out there. Well, barely. It's still hanging on. Uh, so, uh, and by the way, uh, hello to our listeners on WTWW. I bet, I wonder if you could, uh, you know, that was a great song, that Route 66 song. I, I wonder if you could uh, request, get your kicks on Route 66 on WTWW, because they take requests. Uh, if they do, I would recommend the uh, version by Asleep at the Wheel if you're into Texas swing music. And, and you ought to be. We're going to have uh, a word from Dr. Tamitha Scove in the uh, solar update coming up in a little bit. And I did a little smoke and solder stuff over the weekend, and I'll show you the finished result live right here on camera because I was too busy building to take pictures, George. All right, Don. Well, yeah, do you connect your Internet to a router or a router? That would be a router. It's all relative. Uh, Exactly. And don't don't you bring my relatives into here. 
<laughs> okay. And also with us tonight, join us a little bit earlier, uh, but she's always here at the end of the show. Now she's at the first of the show tonight. Hi, Amanda. Well, hello, George. And you guys, George didn't get the memo tonight. We said wear blue. Uh, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. He's what? a rebel. Yep. Yeah. I'll be it. taking your I've questions. got the blue lights. Oh, the blue light. Oh, oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. That mm -hmm. makes sense mm -hmm. for it. I say, first of all, I vote root. Second, um, for those of you this weekend that were prepping for a hurricane, I hope you had a fun, safe time. And uh, stay tuned. I'll have some questions. I'll be taking your questions. We'll give those to the hosts at the end of the show. Back to you, George. Okay, Amanda. We'll be looking forward to you coming back then. Well, Gordo, tell us more about this Route 66. Well, I can tell you it's a one-week operating event, and it's a great opportunity to get some wonderful QSL cards. It was uh, started about 20 years ago by the Arizona, uh, Northern Arizona DX Association, and then taken over by a local group that I'll be visiting uh, tomorrow on, the Citrus Belt Amateur Radio Club and its members in San Bernardino. And uh, we're going to be out there, not on Route 66, but we'll be out there supporting them on uh, high frequency. And uh, we hope everybody has an opportunity. As you can see there, there's some great QSL card ideas that uh, you too may be picking up on Route 66. Oh, I'm sorry, Don. Route no, Route 66. Yeah, and, Route uh, 66. We hope, <laughs> we hope all of you have a good opportunity in working those stations. It starts again this Friday night at uh, actually would be Saturday morning Zulu time, but Friday night uh, right around. Uh, the change to Saturday 0001 Zulu on um, make that um, 0001 Zulu. Um, you get the idea. Friday night into Saturday morning. So good luck on working Route 66. We'll be on 20 meters mobile and uh, maybe hope to uh, hear you. Um, concurrently, uh, certainly uh, a lot of activity on 14. 325, the hurricane net, and 7268, uh, ooh, pretty close to 66, so uh, give them a little elbow room in the evening hours. Uh, that's the hurricane watch net, and we just wish everybody, as Amanda was indicating, on the East Coast, uh, safe, uh, to be safe when uh, the incoming happens. And you know, there's a lot of incoming happens. Um, one of the principal frequencies for maritime mobile is VHF channel 16. And if you live near a river that is uh, patrolled by uh, state police or uh, uh, Coast Guard or parks, if you live next to the ocean that the U.S. Coast Guard uh, is your main responder out at sea, uh, whether it's East Coast, West Coast or the Gulf, um, you can tune in channel 16 with your marine VHF, uh, excuse me, with your ham radio, you can tune in to marine VHF. Simply punch in the frequency 156.8, 156.8, and that's where you'll hear plenty of action uh, when uh, the times are tough. And let me tell you, this past weekend, times were extremely tough for the United States Coast Guard, our auxiliary units, and of course, uh, the uh, uh, many mariners that lost their lives on that dive boat about 22 miles offshore uh, in a very remote uh, island called uh, uh, Santa Cruz Island. And um, uh, huge investigations are going on. You've all heard the news, so you know sort of what happened. The, uh, the vessel just exploded and um, uh, people were trapped. And um, they were trapped because there was a galley in the uh, middle floor. They were down below in the bunk room. And for uh, those that uh, go on these overnight uh, fishing trips or scuba trips, uh, you're usually down below about the water line because it's a much smoother ride. And in the Santa Barbara Channel, believe me, the waves can get pretty tough. But luckily, the weather was not too bad other than a lot of uh, haze. 
the May Day call, May Day, May Day, May Day, came in on Channel 16 at about 3.15. And more than likely, that crewman that was calling the May Day likely had a Marine VHF handheld because the reception was intermittent. Uh, it was noisy, a lot of background noise. And, of course, after the May Day, he uh, indicated he can't breathe. After the United States Coast Guard immediately came back to that station, a much stronger station aboard, likely the same vessel, uh, came on to indicate that uh, they uh, were abandoning ship uh, 30 plus uh, uh, souls were trapped. Uh, there was no door that blocked them below decks. It was the valley. It was the galley. Uh, they called it the kitchen in the newspaper. It was a galley that likely uh, was feeding the flames. And, you know, most galleys aboard vessels that I've been sailing on, uh, almost all of the ranges are run on propane. And propane has a density of 1.55. Air has a density of 1.0. So the propane begins to sink. And when I say sink, remember, these uh, folks were on the uh, bottom floor, you might say the basement uh, of the vessel. And that is probably where the propane began to collect uh, coming out of something uh, malfunctioning in the galley area. Or maybe they were turning things on in the galley area for that uh, breakfast uh, for these 30-plus uh, divers. And that was the ignition. And when the uh, galley went up in flames, that was the only way out. They had no second escape hatch. Oh, yeah, there was a second escape hatch, but you had to go through the galley to get to the escape hatch forward. That's nuts. So I encourage all of you, seriously, whenever you're in a vessel for maybe an overnight cruise or maybe just in a vessel down below, or you're in an RV, as we're going to be this weekend, or you're in an aircraft, Know where your exits are and do not be tempted to stay overnight in anything that does not have an alternate exit, maybe a hotel room because they've got those uh, good uh, fireproof doors. Uh, but uh, be very cautious aboard a fiberglass vessel or a wood vessel as this was that uh, would just go up in a second. You need a second exit out. Uh, when I was down at Christmas Island and doing uh, some of the uh, uh, larger boats going from island to island, um, I slept out on deck because the crew's quarters were down below with only one way out. And that went through the galley or right beside the galley. And I said, you know, I think I'll just get some fresh air. I didn't make a big deal of it. Luckily, everything was fine for us, but not fine this past weekend. So <clears throat> I encourage all of you. Be cautious, watch where uh, you are uh, going to sit down and relax, and always be thinking, what is my exit if I can't get out the way I came in? Unfortunately, they had no alternate exit other than the staircase that took them right through what appears to be the inferno and the start point of those flames. So lives lost. I guarantee my Coast Guard uh, uh, comrades will be uh, studying this. And who knows, I'm sure there'll be much tighter inspections on occupant safety when they're sleeping down below with the galley up above. And who knows where the propane tank was. I guarantee it wasn't down below. But remember, propane sinks. Yes, there was an introduced smell, but we've not heard any reports as to whether or not they smelled the smell before. So on a happier note, just make sure that when you're ready to go uh, off duty and uh, hit the rack, Know where that other exit is, so in an emergency, you can bail. So, Don, let me turn it over to you, and uh, I think you've got some exciting news about ICOM and LDG and our other great sponsors. Don? We sure do. That's uh, that, that's some uh, very, very good words about boating safety. When I bought a boat, my first boat back in 1990, uh, first thing I did was take the Coast Guard Auxiliary Safe Boating Course, and then the next thing I did was... I went down and I bought a, a handheld uh, VHF Marine uh, radio. And later on, I put a 25-watt model with a, a little rail-mounted uh, Shakespeare stainless steel base-loaded whip on there, uh, just in case. But uh, and, and that actually came in handy once in my, my years of boat ownership. 
um, we had uh, had an issue with uh, the engine and actually did have to call Mayday and had to be pulled in by a crew boat that was on their way out to one of the rigs. So, um, yeah, make sure you have that. And that was long before I was a ham. Make sure you have that equipment on there. And uh, I, I had never even thought about the sleeping quarters down below the galley. That's and then having the only escape route come up through the galley where a fire in this case was. I just I can't even imagine. And, yeah, I'd be sleeping on deck, too. So good stuff, Gordon. Thanks for bringing that to us. Let's talk about antenna tuners, shall we? Particularly LDG Electronics antenna tuners. This episode of Ham Nation brought to you by LDG. LDG Electronics provides state-of-the-art automatic antenna tuners for every amateur need from QRP to QRO. That's low power to high power or high power to low power, depending on how you want to mix those letters around. Fixed stations, portable, remote, pretty much any time you need a tuner, an LDG tuner will fill the bill. An LDG tuner will make your radio, match your radio to your antenna using their lightning-fast proprietary tuning algorithms. Check out the LDG AT1000 Pro 2. That is the flagship automatic antenna tuner. It's made for those QRO hams like Gordon. It'll handle 1,000 watts sideband, 500 watts FM and digital. Tuned from 1.8 to 54 megahertz. That's 160 meters to 6 meters continuously. It'll match uh, Yagi's, dipoles, inverted Vs, slopers, virtually any coax-fed antenna from 6 to 1,000 ohms impedance. And the tuning time is under 10 seconds. And if it's a memory tuning, it's under two-tenths of a second. That's 0 0.2 second. Yeah, it's fast. Large, easy-to-read bar graph watt meter with two selectable ranges, dual antenna switch, 2,000 memories for each position. LDG is a family-owned and operated company, and they are absolutely dedicated to bringing innovative quality products to us in the amateur market. Their focus is on anticipating and meeting our needs and providing us with world-class support that is literally just a phone, a call, or an email away. Every LDG tuner carries a two-year full warranty, fully transferable. So if you ever sell or give away your LDG tuner because, uh, you know, you're, a, you're the generous type, the remainder of the warranty will go with it. Free return shipping on all warranty repairs, too, should you need that. All LDG products, including balance and cables, are available for purchase through select resellers. So check out which automatic antenna tuner is right for you, and uh, then go to ldgelectronics.com, because they have it to learn more. That's where you go, ldgelectronics.com, and we thank LDG for their support of Ham Nation. Let's see uh, what George has got going on uh, tonight. George? <laughs> Well, Don, I did not do any smoke and soldering this weekend. I was tied up with other projects. One is pulling the dashboard out of my daughter's uh, Fusion and replacing a little sensor to get the air conditioner running again. I, I did some research on the Internet, and I found out that was a common reason that the air conditioners failed in those Ford Fusions. Uh, and it's only $40. Unfortunately, you have to pull the dashboard out to get to where it needs to be changed. And uh. if you take it to a shop, that's probably going to cost you $600. So I yep. decided I'd, uh, I'd do it myself. And it was an experience and took me, well, I, I got it finally put back together uh, just before dark on Labor Day. So uh, an experience there, but hey, uh, I look at it like I saved six hundred dollars. So <laughs> anyway, that that's not all that I did though over the weekend. Uh this past Friday night we were shooting an episode of Ham College and it just happened to coordinate with Saturday morning in Tokyo. And Ray Novak from ICOM was at the Tokyo Ham Fair this year. And we had arranged for, uh, and it's if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see it down there, Victor. There's a, uh, right there, Tokyo Ham Fair preview. And below that, there's another one. Oh, that's the ICOM 705. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we coordinated with Ray because we were going to be shooting live at that time anyway. So he called in with his phone from Tokyo and we got some live action from right there on the showroom floor at Tokyo Ham Fair. And we took a look at the new products that ICOM was showing this year, uh, some for release, uh, some, most of these that we look at here, 
still under development. So it's, well, it, it was really exciting to be able to do this live, and we appreciate Ray for connecting up with us. It, Timing-wise, it, it just worked out. So I've got a clip here uh, for you tonight from just some of the action that went on in the ICOM booth this past week at Tokyo Ham Fair. It's a lot like Dayton Hamvention, doesn't it? It does. Boy, it sure does. Crowded. I mean, I think we could call this Dayton Hamvention light because the average weight is much less. Oh, wow. So what they're doing right now is, in Japanese, the introduction of the 705 to the crowd here. 705? Yes, the 705 is a new QRP radio introduced by ICOM. Oh, just released really so. a, a direct sampling on HF, and I'm not sure if it's a single or a double conversion for VHF and UHF. Huh. So it's brand new that we're just now releasing it on the world. Releasing information. It's not ready to sell yet. It's still in the development stage. Hmm. Interesting radio. And I mean, they're they're really packed in here. Oh, it looks like it. Now, you said QRP rig? Yes, sir. Five watts with the same battery pack that you have on your ID51A. Wow. Oh, wow. That's neat. So That's pretty awesome. They're introducing a new backpack for it as well. So um, this is going to be very... Very interesting to try to get around into here. So, there we go. Finally. So the radio weighs less than one kilogram. Oh, nice. Oh, this one. This one's just a dummied up unit. We're looking at the speaker mic in the backpack. And then wow. we've got the power button right here. Uh, this one, this one's not powering up either. Hmm. But a little bit farther over we do. But to give you an idea of the size. Wow. And how long? Yeah. Is looking at looking at the tape underneath it. Yeah, that's not a working unit. So has ICOM had a QRP rig before? Yes, we did the IC703, which was built on the 706 body. Hmm. So I'm, I'm making my way over here. So this is a replacement for that? Yes. Yeah. But it goes a, it goes a, quite a bit more because the 703... We had the 703 and the 703 plus, and that just did HF in six. But here we go. We get a good idea. So, Tommy, that looks like your battery, doesn't it? It sure does. Wow. So, we're going to have to have some better rope when you bring that by the studio here. Yeah, they're not going to let me ba back with this one. Yeah. But there's all your bands. Oh. Oh, wow. Your modes. So, all band, all mode? Wow, it looks this like CR. Yeah, that's incredible. So I don't know if you guys are hearing me clear. The audio is kind of choppy coming back. Yeah, you, say, you sound fine here. So we got the mini scope. It functions a lot like a 7300 and a 9700. So let me let me back get back out of here. Uh, I want to show you guys uh, new technology. Sorry, they're showing a 
concept on technology. It's not something that we're going to release in products, but just showing you the capabilities. Okay. So, you know, we, we watched on TV where you could speak into a universal translator. Mm. Yeah, right. So, so this is an IP501, which operates on the LTE network. Good morning. Good morning. So what it does is it goes over an LTE network into a server and then back out, but then it translates it from English to Japanese or Japanese back to English. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Very interesting. So give you an idea of the... A digital, digital battlefish. Hold on. Hey, can you do it again? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. So are you guys able to hear that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's yeah. amazing. So that was just very basic conversation. Again, just showing a prototype. We got a cutaway of the 9700 showing the three separate PAs that are internal. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then also there's new firmware that's being released that helps with the stability. But there will be at the end of September even more new firmware that will allow you to transfer photos between two 9700s without a computer or without uh, any auxiliary devices. So it looks like they're loading it in with a computer here. But here's Miss Nami. She's she's uh, the Miss D star here in Japan. <laughs> that is interesting. So you use the display on the radio. That's pretty cool. Here we go. So we go to picture. And that looks just like what you guys did in that video transferring photos to each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So on no this one, there's where it looks like slow scan, and then there's the output. Wow. That's very awesome. So that, that'll be exciting to see. They're showing the app for the R30 and the, the receivers here. And then finally, if you want to not play QRP, but you want to uh, look at high power, we have the new PW1. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it will be a replacement for the PW1, but it is called the PW2. And this one's going to be configured for contesting. As you can see, the crowd around it is just unbelievable. It's HF and 6 meters. But it is an SO2R amplifier. Huh. So it has been several years since ICOM released a new amplifier, right? Oh, it has been a while. Uh, probably 15 years. Does that say 1KW? I guess it does. Yeah. I'm trying to... Here we go. I'll get in here this time. So right now it's an SO2R mode. And you can see it's on 20 and 15. It tells you the temperature rating, the humidity. Showing the back of the amplifier. Nice. That looks like one of the rigs almost. Yeah. And, and the head comes out as a remote head. Cool. Oh, and then check out the output. Huh. There, there are brochures in English that we will send out soon. And you can, oh, they're modeling the backpack. And the lady 
if, if I remember correctly, this is Masako. She is a uh, pop singer in Japan that is a ham radio operator, and a lot of her songs uh, deal with ham radio. Wow. That's, that's cool. So she'll turn around here in a minute. <laughs> And we should be getting close to the time for us to do the presentation in English. Let me come around here to Miss Airy. This is Mr. Uh, Asano-san. He's in charge of the advertising department at ICOM. And in Anabasan, he came with us to Dayton this year. But Miss Airy is about to do it in English. Yeah, I'm about to give a presentation in English. Oh, cool. In 30 minutes. In 30 minutes on what radio? Uh, I see 705. Wow. All right, guys. So I don't know if you want to come back in about a half hour or what you want yeah. to do. Ring us. Why don't you ring us back in half an hour? Okay. Sounds good. All right, Ray. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for this uh, light breaking story here from Tokyo Hampton. Right, I appreciate Hampton. it, guys. You have a good one. Yeah, All right. You, you too. We'll Ray. see you in a little bit. And we did also carry that video in English of the IC705 from Aerie. And uh, you should check that out. Just go to amateurlogic.tv and you'll find the link to both videos there. Uh, that's the easiest way for me to tell you how to find it because it's, um, well, no need to trying to spell out a YouTube link right, or link right here live. That would be difficult. You probably wouldn't remember it. So go check them at amateurlogic.tv. That 705 is a really nice looking rig. Uh, it's it's still in development right now, so we don't know a date of when it's going to be released. Uh, we don't know uh, what the price will be yet. None of that's been determined, but uh, it I believe it will be ready in time for Dayton. So it's it's not terribly far away. Uh, we'll have to watch that more. If you like the 7300, the 7610, the 9700, you'll be right at home with that, just like um, any any of the ICOM rigs. They all operate very similar. This is really going to change up things in the QRP world, I believe. Uh, some folks have mentioned about it does not include a tuner, and no, there's no tuner in it. But a lot of people don't want a tuner. They use resonant antennas. And in that case, why would you want to uh, be forced to pay for a tuner? You know, I'm suspecting somebody will come out with a tuner just for this rig that maybe even snaps onto the case or something. Anyway, uh, great looking QRP rig there and features that, you know, we, frankly, we've never seen on a QRP rig before. So looking forward to that coming out. Well, I didn't get to do any uh, smoke and soldering, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but I did have something finally show up. It's been on back order for over a month now. My Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte memory model, came in uh, a couple of days ago. And last night, I uh, burned an image on an SD card, put it in the case, and booted it up. And I've got it going now. I can't give you any details as to exactly how fast it is. I can tell you it is faster than previous models. Looking forward to doing that, though. Uh, USB 3 on it. Uh, it has two video ports now. And both of them are the uh, micro HDMI style connector but they do 4K. So that is interesting. Um, and it's available, you know, in the standard one gig models like all the other Raspberry Pis, but also two gigabyte models, which I had one of those that I have not uh, burned an image for yet, I've got to do. And the four gigabyte model, the one that's been back ordered so long. So I'll let you know more about that as it comes along and uh, hey don's gonna 
uh, do some smoke and soldering for us here a little bit later in the show. I do want to mention, though, if you've been working on something, we want to know about it. Uh, send photos of your project and a description, no videos, please, to Randy. Send it to hamprojects at twit.tv, and you may be in a future episode of Show Us Your Projects, hamprojects at twit.tv. And we look forward to seeing what you're building. Well, we'll be back in just a moment with uh, more Ham Nation tonight. But first, let's get a message from ICOM. Heard it, worked it, logged it. It's time to get the transceiver that's best suited for your lifestyle. ICOM offers a variety of high-performance and innovative products. Make the most out of contest season with one of these ICOMs today. IC7610, the SDR every ham wants. This high-performance SDR has the ability to pick out the faintest of signals, even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The ICOM IC7610 is a direct sampling, software-defined radio that will change the world's definition of a SDR transceiver. RF direct sampling, 110 RMDR, independent dual receivers, and dual digicell. Or get the IC7300. Changing the way entry-level HF is designed, this high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design will far exceed your expectations. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. Keep your competitive edge with faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. ICOM's IC7851 is the pinnacle of HF perfection. Dual receivers, digital IF filters, memory keyer, digital voice recorder, high-resolution spectrum waterfall display, enhanced PC connectivity, and SD memory card slot. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on all the great ICOM radios. And ICOM invites you to enter in their weekly drawings for some great swag prizes like T-shirts and hats. And when you do that, you'll also be entered in the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. Go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this episode and each episode of Ham Nation and register to win. For September, the new prize is the ICOM ID5100A dual band, dual watch mobile. Built-in GPS, touchscreen operation, DVDV dual watch, DVFM repeater list function. There's a micro SD card slot for voice and data storage, an available UT133 Bluetooth module, and there's downloadable Bluetooth and Android apps available for it. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this in each episode and register to win. Who knows, we could be uh, calling your name at the end of the month as a grand prize winner there. And every week they give away multiple swag kits, so chances are good there. Go register, icomamerica.com slash hamnation. And now the man with all the news that's news in the ham radio, it's Don Wilbanks. Yeah, before we get into that, I want to show you uh, my little smoke and solder project. Um, I, I was too busy building. I hadn't built a kit in forever, so I didn't want to be distracted by, by taking pictures or video or anything. So I'm going to show you the, the finished product. It comes from Four States QRP, uh, which uh, Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB, has uh, talked about at length. Uh, on this uh, program, and it's, uh, it is a shortwave receiver, and it's called the Ozark Patrol. It's a regen, a regen receiver, which is really, really cool. It uh, basically goes from 3.5 meg to about uh, 15 or so, and uh, there is the finished product right there. It is very nice looking. See if I can see that. We've got that nice piano black on the front, and, and that is a double-sided circuit board, and uh, it's all solder-masked, and it's all tinned on the front, too. That's where you get that nice silver uh, uh, silver color from the tinning, but it's it's clad on that side as well as the back side to uh, minimize the uh, uh, capacitive coupling of your hand. You still get some, but not nearly as much. If I flip this around, you'll see first off the base is on a pine board. <laughs> on the back, it's all surface mount, but it's not surface mount. It's discrete components 
that I basically you solder the pads and uh, it works out great. There's uh, three transistors on there. Uh, you've got a speaker. You've got uh, a, a headphone jack as well. And uh, you wind the toroid. It's 20 turns on there. It's very cool. Little Fonstock uh, clips for the antennas, or the antenna. And that is a this curly cue thing above my finger here. Uh, just yeah, just right here is what's called a gimmick capacitor and uh, you can tighten it up or loosen it and it helps in matching the antenna of course just a random wire is all you need but a uh, very cool little kit took about six hours to put together i haven't tried it out yet because i don't have any batteries but uh, that's that's coming up next but uh four stage qrp you can just google them it's called the ozark patrol and uh there it is right there there's uh everything you need to know is right there on that on the web page like i said just google uh ozark patrol and you'll come up with there's the assembly manual the schematic parts list there's a really good photo page on there uh showing you uh, all kinds of cool stuff and they've got a lot of great a lot of great kits on there and speaking of joe, joe eisenberg gave me this kit at huntsville he said here i got something for you i think you'll enjoy this and, and i did joe thank you very much joe was going to be at the peoria Superfest along with me coming up september 21st uh, that weekend and he is going to be doing a kit build and he gave me a preview of it today and uh Pretty cool. I'm going to I'm gonna have to make time to get in on that kit build and uh, and maybe build one of those as well. So uh, looking at that, would, would, what he's doing is would be perfect with a little Ozark Patrol, I think, to, as a battery eliminator. Uh, I'm not going to give you any more on that, but uh, it's going to be cool. So hopefully you can uh, you can check Joe out at uh, Peoria, Illinois with me and uh, Drew Vreba, our uh, Young Ham of the Year at the Peoria Superfest. We're looking forward to that and uh, thank them, those guys, for the for the invite. Hope to see a lot of Ham Nation viewers up there. All right, that's my little smoke and solder thing for the week. Got to get me some batteries. I'll probably steal some from work. Did I say that out loud? Oh, no. Well, I'll borrow some from work. And while I try to figure out an alibi for that, let's go ahead and catch the news of the week from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 2,183. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. At production time, Hurricane Dorian was raking Grand Bahama Island with sustained winds of 155 miles an hour and was creeping west at one mile per hour towards Palm Beach, Florida. This is an active story and we'll have updates on the next Amateur Radio Newsline Report. We turn now to South India where floods wiped out all critical modes of communication except for one, Amateur Radio. The Malabar Amateur Radio Society in India reports that its repeater system provided critical connections in some parts of the Indian state of Kerala in early August after a landslide disrupted all communication lines throughout the region, including mobile phone servers. The state had been hard hit by flooding and even the radio system used by local police had failed. The Ham Radio Society told the Hindu newspaper that when word of the landslide hit, the communications cutoff was anticipated. Fortunately, the local amateurs had participated in a number of disaster management drills and were prepared. The Malabar Amateur Radio Society told the newspaper that this was a repeat of the kind of support the hams provided during the 2018 floods. The Malabar Amateur Radio Society has other good news to report. The group will be setting up what's believed to be India's first digital voice repeater station, utilising D-Star. The solar-powered station is expected to become a crucial part of the group's strategy the next time disaster strikes the region. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm John Williams, VK4JJW. Some new hams in Romania are celebrating the completion of their first experience with Summits on the Air, and it was a success. On a summit in Romania in mid-August, the newly licensed young hams of the Y06 KGS Radio Club savoured the first falling stars of the Perseids meteor shower and the next day something equally stellar, the first summit on the air experience. With teachers from their school, including Adrian Bocciu, Y05IA, guiding them, the teenagers learned about local flora at a nature reserve in eastern Transylvania, heard about meteor scatter and pursued SOTA contacts on 20 meters, as well as UHF and VHF, over the course of four days. They learned how properly to set up their antennas and make SOTA contacts. They also said that the companionship, good humor and lessons they'd learned had made the experience memorable. So memorable, in fact, that they're hoping to do it all over again. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Boot, G4NJH. Hams in New Zealand are preparing to scale the summits there to honor a very special silent key for the second year in a row. 
Andrew White at L3CC took pleasure in combining two things he considered some of the best things in his life, amateur radio and the beautiful outdoor landscape of New Zealand. The Christchurch resident fully embraced these activities through the awards program known as Summits on the Air, activating Mount Sinclair, Coronet Peak and Cobb Ridge amongst scores of others. After he became a silent key unexpectedly in 2018, New Zealand Association of Radio Transmitters proclaimed that the Saturday after his birthday was to be known as Andrew White Memorial Sota Activity Day to honour his work and his contributions. This year's event the second such activity is taking place on the 14th of September. NZART's Vice President Warren Harris said L2AJ noted in a recent NZART podcast that the purpose of the day is to get out on a summit in the same spirit as Andrew himself did and to remember this silent key. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With John Williams, VK4JJW, Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, Jim Meachin, ZL2BHF, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Now, here's the solar update with Dr. Tamitha Scove, WX6SWW. Space weather this week has definitely been a bit on the exciting side. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see that coronal hole that's leaving the sun's west limb. That coronal hole brought us some fast solar wind, and along with a stealthy solar swarm, it brought us up to storm levels at Earth. In fact, it brought us up to G2 levels, which is a moderate storm level. And this lasted over three days, so it's an extended storm period. And unfortunately, the peak of the storm happened right around September 1st and 2nd, right when Hurricane Dorian was absolutely hovering over the Bahamas and just decimating multiple cities there. And the first responders and the hurricane watch nets, of course, they went dead. I heard amateur radio operators and emergency responders were having a horrible time trying to get people up on 20 and 40 meters, but they managed to do it sporadically. Luckily, since then, things have been dying down with the storm. And as Dorian continues to ravish the east coast of the United States, it looks like the watch nets are back up and running pretty well. Now, back at the sun, we also have had a very small sunspot that showed up for a little while. It was kind of spitting off a few things here and there, but nothing in terms of uh, flares. There's no real strong activity there, so no worry about radio blackouts. And then that region has since kind of died down a bit. As we switch to our partial backside monitor, this is stereo. It's kind of looking at the sun from the side. You can see there are a couple bright regions on the sun's backside that are going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next few days. They're most likely not strong enough to boost the solar flux any. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I'm sorry, the solar flux is going to continue to stay in about the mid to high 60s over the next week. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still coming down from that moderate level solar storm that bumped us up to G2 levels here over the past couple days. But luckily the storm is finally beginning to wane. At high latitudes, NOAA is only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20 to 25% chance of a major storm. Now, mid latitudes, things are a little bit more quiet. We're also expecting unsettled conditions, but only about a 20% chance of active conditions. And this is good news to you emergency responders for Hurricane Dorian, especially those working the hurricane watch nets. It doesn't look like we're gonna have that much more uh, problems from the solar solar storm causing disruptions on radio frequencies. So luckily, as things continue to quiet down through the week, it should get better and better. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a bright region on the Earth-facing disk right now, but it is not causing any big flares. So everything is still in the green when it comes to flares and radio blackouts. We don't have any risk for that. Luckily, though, it is boosting the solar flux just a little bit. We're now sitting in the high 60s, and that will continue here over the next few days before that region rotates off of the Earth-facing disk. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders 
receivers, you're getting a little bit of a boost for radio propagation, but it's not all that much. Now, meanwhile, because we are in the solar minimum, we have a cosmic ray flux that's a bit higher than it normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. For more details on this week's space weather, including when and where to see Aurora, how GPS and emergency radio is going to fare, especially with Hurricane Dorian, come check out my channel or see me at spaceweatherwoman.com. Make sure you check her out on Twitter there. You saw the Twitter address, at Tamitha Scove. Uh, sh she's a great follow, and I'm, I'm glad she mentioned Hurricane Dorian. It reminded me to uh, give you the latest. Uh, I checked the latest just before we went uh, on the air. Um, it was a Category 5 with winds of one, sustained winds of 185 miles per hour and, of course, gusts way over 200 when it was raking the Bahamas. It stayed over the Bahamas for 48 hours. Now, when you think about that, for those of you who maybe uh, most of you watching have probably never been in any kind of tropical weather unless, of course, you've spent some time down here on the coast, think in terms of a tornado, an EF4 Tornado, which is a devastating, devastating tornado, has winds approaching 185 to 200 miles an hour. Of course, that's normally over when it hits you. It's over with in seconds or at, at, the, at the very most a minute or two. Imagine that sitting on your head for 48 hours. That's the kind of devastation that uh, we're going to be seeing and we have been seeing coming out of the Bahamas just Horrendous. At least 20 confirmed deaths in the Bahamas, probably more to come. The good news is it has decreased dramatically. It's now, as of about 8 o'clock uh, before we went on the air, a Category 2 with winds of 110. It's moving north at about 5 miles an hour. So uh, hopefully it'll be getting out of here. It's about 130 miles south of Charleston, South Carolina right now. And at this point, I think it's expected to stay offshore, which uh, is a good thing. We'll certainly minimize uh, any effects. Um, but uh, our hearts are with uh, the folks down in the Bahamas. And uh, uh, if you can help out by donating to the Red Cross or any of the other bona fide relief organizations, we, uh, we certainly uh, encourage you to do so. All right. So, uh, like I said, our prayers are with uh, the folks in the Bahamas and, of course, on the East Coast, too, those people who are going to be uh, affected, if at all. So. Let's talk now about uh, a website, and the website is uh, could be your website uh, if you need one, and a great way to build one is to use a company called Hover. Hover is a jumping-off point for entrepreneurs, and a lot of them anyway, and they, they uh, want you to start uh, your business with a domain name. Hover has over 300 do domain name extensions to choose from when building your brand online. So no matter what you want to build, there's a domain name waiting for you. If you want to start your own amateur radio uh, website or show, go to hover.com slash twit and check out some of the domain names. They have amateurradio.tech. They have hamradio.engineer. They have a whole lot more, too. You'll find exciting technical support available to answer any questions you may have. The support team doesn't upsell you either. They only work hard to help you get online and that's 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 their main goal just get you online they're not going to upsell you hover has free who is privacy protection it's got a clean and easy to navigate to ux and ui monthly sales on popular top level domains as well keep your domain name separate from hosting it gives you the flexibility to choose the right platform for your business no one wants to be stuck with a solution that doesn't meet your needs so for instance i talked about uh, maybe stealing batteries from uh, work from the radio station to power up my uh, my my ozark patrol now, i'm not going to get in trouble for that because you know our engineers are hams but uh, just in case i did i might need uh, you know don's resume at and see if i can get that i, I bet you probably can be be looking for that on a computer near you <laughs> well, cross your fingers that we don't. Yeah, and uh, no matter what your domain name is going to be, uh, make it personal. Make a name for yourself with Hover. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit. 10% off your domain extension for a full year. And we, of course, thank Hover for their support. Time to head over to the chat room now with Amanda K1DDN, and she's going to uh, probably have some questions for us uh, from the chat room, Amanda. 
I have tons of questions. I also have tons of comments about what Brian typed in there. So many Will Banks pages. So many opportunities <laughs> for you, Don. I'm not I even know, kidding. I know. I, yeah. All right. So, you know, I'm on the show and I always sit at Jeff's uh, desk when I do this show. And he always has random crap out here. So I had to show you guys this. Y'all ever seen one of these? It won't focus on it very well. It's a GPS, a Dio. Anyhow, he has two of these boxes sitting here. And I thought, huh, this is kind of cool. There's like a 10 megahertz plug out here. And anyhow, check it out. He uses it for his voter systems. Um, all right, let's get to the real questions. First of all, I have one announcement to make. The New England AWRL convention is Friday, September 7th through the 8th at the Regency Hotel in Boxborough, Massachusetts. And um, with that, let's go to Gordo first. Gordo, with this hurricane coming, what are Aries people doing right now over there? Well, um, first of all, regarding Boxborough, that is a wonderful convention. And I encourage all of you to turn out to Boxborough. I did Boxborough a couple of years ago. Friendly people, wonderful uh, convention. I love Boxborough. Um, Aries has mobilized. And right now, of course, we're switching over to the new Aries management program. But from what I understand, Aries operators that are during this transition are still out there uh, serving their either served agency or the Aries uh, leadership and are ready to uh, deploy. Uh, but of course, will not do anything Thing until they've been given the actual deployment. So we encourage all of you uh, not to self-deploy self -deploy in that uh, self-deployment is uh, not allowed for both Aries as well as our own U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary as much as we'd like to. However, it certainly doesn't uh, prevent you from uh, getting on the air and broadcasting to locals any um, uh, important weather information that you may have that you feel the net control can pass on to either their served agency within the city or to the National Hurricane Center. So, yep, Aries is quite active during this transition period uh, that the league is now bolstering our Aries uh, teamwork. Uh, back to you. Absolutely. And the other thing is, is that a lot of times um, these EOCs are planning way ahead for this stuff, even if the hurricane ends up not hitting them directly. So a lot of these Aries members are traveling there and they're planning to stay there for about a week. So they bring their sleeping bags and they find a cot in the back of the room somewhere at the EOC and they're typically mobilized and ready to go before the hurricane ever gets there, maybe even up to a couple of days beforehand. So um, we, we send them all the best and hope that, that they're not needed at all but they'll be there if they are. All right, um, this next question, uh, Dawn, is for you. This was answered in the chat room, but in case anyone's just listening out there, what batteries does that Ozark Patrol require? It requires six AA batteries, which of course is nine volts, but you can't use a nine volt because it uh, pulls a little bit too much current. So yeah, six AA batteries. Uh, Joe, k 0 nb was telling me that uh, some of the guys are using C batteries. For that as well, because you get a little bit more capacity. But uh, yeah, six. So it has a uh, it has a battery uh, carrier here for six AA batteries on that. So oh, and while I'm here, I wanted to mention somebody in the chat room uh, mentioned uh, they wanted us to plug something going on in Wyoming. I put the link in the uh, rundown for you, Vic. The 2019 AWRL Wyoming Section Convention is this weekend, September 7th in. Uh, in Gillette, Wyoming. So if you're going to be in that area, uh, by all means, go by and give them a visit. Amanda? All right. Thank you. Now, George, this uh, this this was brought up when you, I think we had to hang up on you and call you back or whatnot. Gordo had mentioned that he was looking for questions for the extra pool and he wanted all of our audience to submit some questions. Um, something maybe that they're missing that they haven't covered in the extra poll. He thought maybe digital, something FT8 related or whatever, maybe more ATV questions. I definitely think they need more polar coordinate questions myself. Um, what do you think, George? 
Um, you know, <laughs> put me on the spot. <laughs> I, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, I, I think they probably need, well, I haven't seen what the new poll is going to have, so it's hard to say for sure. But yeah, uh, probably uh, more up-to-date technology questions uh, to deal with, not in depth, but a little bit with software-defined radios and um, that type of thing. You know, it's it's you hate to give up any of the old stuff because all of that is still valid uh, for the most part. But yeah, there probably some uh, refreshing of some of the more modern technology in there might might go good. I agree. Um, and yeah, you guys, seriously, if you if you had known me while I was studying to take this extra class test back in the day, um, no, I don't actually believe that there should be more polar coordinate questions. I think they should be gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally tongue in cheek, I promise you. Uh, yeah, things, um, uh, WinLink, all of it. Now we have FT4. I think we need to know the difference between these modes because how can we explain it to somebody else if we don't know what they are and why you should do, use the different modes? So. That's kind of where I'm at on it. Uh, Don, any thoughts? No, I uh, I studied extra for a year, and the uh, for me it was the impedance questions because mm -hmm. uh, no time ever in any of the the math that I took in school, which admittedly was the bare minimum, uh, was there ever a number J. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the part that threw me off on on the extra was uh, oh my god I hope I I hope I get one of these questions that I actually know the answer and I did I didn't have to pull out a, a, a calculator to figure <laughs> it out but but yeah I'm like Jay Jay's not a number and, and just like phew, head blown so yeah just just I studied for a year just whatever whatever's in the question pool just put the time in and uh, take the practice test and and you'll be fine but yeah that was the part that threw me off was. Jay's not a number? Jay? <laughs> really? Mm. So the other thing you can do, right, Gordo, is we can look at some books. Um, we happen to know a guy around here. But no, yeah, Gordo, ho, go ahead and uh, give us that again. Give uh, the audience the spiel about how, how and when they should send those questions to you. Okay. Well, I just got the word a couple of days ago from the question pool committee that uh, they're continuing to uh, seek questions from the general public. And I go, wow, if I've not heard about it, they've not heard about it. But I think there was something in QST magazine for a call for questions. But quite frankly, every time a new question pool comes under review by the question pool committee for a new series of questions beginning July 1, and it'll be July 1, uh, almost a year from now for extra class. General is already set. It's published. It's out there. So I'm doing this for the committee, not for my book or the league's book or anyone else's book. I'm doing this because it's fun to upgrade the questions. So uh, those of you that have an old uh, uh, league book or Gordo book or anyone's book on extra class, take a look at those questions. And all I need is one or two from each of you uh, to replace a question. Just tell me uh, uh, this question is... Uh, really old. It should read uh, question uh, and give the question number and then we will see if we can replace it. And for everyone that uh, gets into uh, the new question pool, uh, I guarantee we'll uh, list your name and call sign in a prominent publication so you can say, yeah, I added one question for the new extra pool, but uh, the deadline is next Tuesday. So uh, send me an email, wb6noa at arrl.net, and uh, just tell me a question and the right answer. I'll come up with the wrong ones called distractors for you and uh, send it on to the uh, National Conference of Volunteer Examiner Coordinators Question Pool Committee. Back to you, Amanda. That's great, Gordo. Thank you so much. And I, I, I'm thinking of tons of questions, but most of them would probably fall more under the technician or uh, general class. And I'm thinking of things like 
more system fusion, Brandmeister, what's the difference, All Star. There's all of these things now that we don't test on and we don't know anything about it. So you only look into it if you hear about it from somebody else or if it sparks your interest. So with that, we're done. We're going to go over some nuts here tonight. I have not seen W7 UDI on chat room, so I'm not sure if there's going to be a 20 meter net tonight, but we do have Kevin KC7 FPF. He says he's clear of the uh, the hurricane so far, and he's going to be on 7192. We also have D Star and 14 Charlie and 31012 for our DMR net. So with that, George, back to you. Okay, Amanda, thanks. Some good questions tonight. And boy, uh, we need to come up with some good questions for Gordo for that extra book there. You know, I, if I had one that ended up in the pool, I don't know that I would want credit for it in a national publication. I might not want people knowing that I I was responsible for that question that they missed. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, good point. Good show That's tonight. True everyone uh great to to see you all tonight and we look forward to bob being back with us next week before we get out of here let's just go around real quick and see if there's any final words uh gordo uh no final words other than if you live next to a sea coast or next to a, a large uh, lake patrolled by uh, a lake patrol uh, for heaven's sake, think about if you go out on the water, a marine VHF handheld, they're about 200 bucks. And although I have not heard that uh, this uh, tragedy this past weekend um, was on digital, all of these marine VHF radios have a hidden digital distress button. And that's another way that that first operator uh, could have uh, sent the May Day out, which would have included his lat lawn and that is with a marine VHF handheld to uh, hold and press the digital distress button with their maritime mobile service identity number memorized. So I uh, encourage everybody with a plain old ham radio handheld or a great ham radio handheld like this one, tune 156.8, especially on the East Coast, because who knows, you may pick up a call from a mariner uh, just a couple of uh, hundred yards away calling May Day and needing help drifting out into the path of the hurricane, and you might be the one to hear that. So again, on Marine VHF, you can pick it up with ham radio only on receive, though, 156.800. George? Okay, Gordo, that's good information there. And uh, certainly we learned a lot from you tonight when you were discussing the uh, the potential issues with that boat fire. That's uh, something you want to definitely be careful of and something I had not thought about before not being a mariner. So, wow, um, timely information there. Don, any final words from down south? Nope, just uh, thanks uh, everybody for being here. And if you're in thinking about getting into kits uh, and you like shortwave radios, this is a, a good one. The Four States QRP Ozark Patrol. Just put Ozark Patrol in Google and you'll find everything you need to do. Uh, it took me about six hours to do this and I had not done a kit in forever. Uh, it's a great little kit, a lot of fun to build, real easy. And uh, the less than 100 parts uh, went together fairly quickly. And winding the toroid was no problem at all. And uh, you can listen to WTWW on this bad boy. Also, you can uh, uh, listen to uh, some of the ham bands and, you know, with AM and sideband and CW. It's, it's all on here because it's just a nice, basic, regenerative uh, receiver. So uh, check that out. Ozark Patrol, Four States QRP Club, and a uh, huge thanks to uh, my buddy Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB, who is the kit building editor for CQ Magazine. Uh, for uh, putting that in my hand at uh, Huntsville. And, of course, like I said, Joe's going to be at Peoria. I'll be at Peoria coming up uh, later on about three weeks. And Joe's going to be doing a kit bill there, and uh, it's always a great time. So hopefully, if you're going to be in the Peoria, Illinois area for the Peoria Superfest, it's their 100th birthday of the club. And it's also my birthday. It's my birthday party, the Peoria Superfest slash Don's birthday party. So we hope to see you there, George. <laughs> 
Okay, Don, I would think, you know, if if you've got a free radio, that you would at least bring for the batteries for it. But yeah, uh, we'll yeah. see. I, I want to see it hey, operating. I'm a ham. I'm frugal. <laughs> I'll steal it well, from work. I, I'm not above stealing batteries from work. I do I need have, to like, point out. I have like 16 remotes in my house. I mean, really? Steal from all of your remote six, controls that you don't use. Six yeah, they're not, they're is not. one more. Six yeah. batteries is one more than you can really safely uh, steal from an engineering department. I I just feel <laughs> like I need to let you know that. You know, you could Apparently, be pushing things there. <laughs> the voice of experience. Oh, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I used to dole out the batteries. I, I know how it goes. Well, I, I really a great-looking kit. Man, I saw you posting it on Facebook, you know, over uh, the last few days. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, man, this this looks like something old that Don is rebuilding. And I looked a little closer. No, that's a kit. And mm -hmm. I, I like, I just, I just like the way it looks. And that style, I thought more about it. The style of mounting the components on top of the PC board like that, that's yeah. very similar to Manhattan style. Right. Similar, not exactly the right. same, but... The guy that uh, developed the stock, the guy that developed this uh, this particular technique, he's, it says it says on that on the website the four four sqrp dot com slash ozark patrol, uh, it says he's from Pittsburgh. So he calls it Pittsburgh style construction. But yeah, it's essentially Manhattan construction. Uh, but uh, everything is just solders right on top, and the but both sides of the board are tinned. So uh, as soon as you touch your, uh, I mean, as soon as you touch the iron to the pad, it sucks the solder up so well. And uh, it, it's very, 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 very easy to uh, uh, to to mount the components. I got down to the very last component, which was like a 56 picofarad, tiny, tiny, tiny little ceramic capacitor, and I dropped it on the floor and it went in the dog kennel. It took me an hour to find it, but uh, <laughs> I found it finally. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal some. I'm gonna I'm gonna acquire some. I'm gonna get some batteries tomorrow. I think uh, at where uh, at uh, somewhere, and I'm going to try to fire this thing up and listen to WTWW. Yeah, I like the way you phrase that. That sounds much more legit. You might get away with it. <laughs> well, Amanda, I see you've got a visitor there. I, I guess the uh, wow, look at those teeth. I do. She's holding her ball right now, so she's a very happy puppy. And I just wanted to say. Jeff and I also used a radio to be rescued in a boat one time. Our unit in came in handy and uh, we called for help. Our motor died. It was 4 a.m. and our anchor let up. So we were headed right to the dam and not a big lake, but still you're panicked. You're headed towards the dam. You're going to run into a concrete wall. So uh, Jeff called on channel 16 in uh, the marina the marina answered they called out for help to the rangers and the marina felt so bad because it took them about two hours to come out and get us that they finally sent out their own tugboat and got us and brought us back in wow. so it and it's scary you have white caps coming over and over your boat we had we we're in a small little 16 foot boat and we our anchor had finally caught on a sandbar somewhere that was the only thing holding us from getting into that dam and we sat wow. there for a really long time, and it was a uh, it was a pretty scary situation. So uh, that radio was it for us. Get a radio for your boat. That's all I can say. All right, you guys, back to you, George. All right, good good information there too, Amanda. Wow, I didn't didn't think about uh, maritime adventures in Colorado, but I guess it's possible anywhere that you got water and get in a boat. Thanks for watching tonight, everyone. I uh, appreciate you being here. And join us again next week, next Wednesday night. Join us live at twit.tv for the next Ham Nation. And Bob should be back with us then. Until then, uh, fire up that soldering iron and do a little something with it. Don should have given you the bug tonight. If not, we'll keep working on it. 7.30. 7-3.